Hi everyone, thanks a lot for watching this short video on how to secure your AWS root account. As we all know that root account is the most powerful account, so you will find this video very useful. So this is the brief agenda uh, we have put together. First, we will talk about what are the AWS root account best practices. Then we will discuss upon how Cybra can help you to secure root account. Then we will deep dive into what are the different steps to be performed to onboard the credential and how the credential retrieval process should look like. And then we will be spending majority of the time in the demonstration and the step-by-step -step guide. So here are some of the AWS root account best practices. Again, all this information you can easily find out from AWS documentation. The first and foremost is that you shouldn't use AWS root account for day-to-day -day operation. And it should be used only for very specific purposes like changing the account setting, changing the support plan, restoring the permission of a IAM administrator in case it has been revoked. The second thing is we shouldn't enable the programmatic access on the AWS root account. And then MFA should always be enabled and password should be strong. Both MFA device and the password should be stored in the secured safe. Last but not the least, so whenever anybody wanna make use of these root credentials and the MFA, they have to go through some sort of a approval workflow and these activities uh, that who is accessing those credentials should be properly logged. So now the point comes, how Cybra can help you to protect these root accounts. Here are a few things how Cybra can help you. The first point is you can store the AWS root account credential in the Cybra vault. And then this account will be secured using multi-level approval workflow. And one more thing can be done. You can split the root account password and store in two different saves. Then, uh, so Cybra has recently launched MFA TOTP connection component. With the help of these connection components, you can make Cybra as a virtual MFA, and you can simply store your TOTP key in the vault. Again, this specific account can be secured using the multi-level approval workflow. Last but not the least, whenever anyone is accessing any of these two privilege accounts, the entire activity is gonna be logged. In terms of who is accessing these root account credentials and at what time. So let's see how to set up. So, so to set up, there are a few simple steps what we have to perform. The first step is you have to go to the Cybra market base. You have to download uh, two different plugins. The first one is the AWS root account management with MFA. And the second one is TOTP token. And once you are able to uh, download AWS root account management with MFA, unzip this particular plugin. And you will be able to see two different platforms. The first platform is going to be AWS root account with MFA. And the second one is going to be MFA device secret key. Import both of these platform into CyberArk. Then as a third step, so you have to import the TOTP uh, token connection component. The fourth step is, so you have to associate this TOTP uh, token connection component with the MFA device secret key platform. So these are the four simple steps what you have to perform as a prerequisite. So then once uh, we have uh, done all the prerequisites, then let's see how the credential vaulting is gonna look like. So what we will be doing, we will be creating two different account. The first account is where we will be storing the root account credential. And for this specific account, we will be using the uh, AWS root account with MFA platform, what we imported earlier. And then here, our recommendation is you can keep the username as your root account user so that it is going to be easier for the user to find out the username and the password from the same place. 
The second account is, so we will be making CyberArk as your virtual MFA. So you have to copy and paste the uh, key from AWS to CyberArk. And then you will be getting a OTP. You have to key in a two consecutive OTP on the AWS side to enable the virtual MFA. So last but not the least, again, you might wanna split the password and store it into two different saves for additional layer of security. And also you can enforce a multi-approval workflow. So this is how this entire flow is gonna look like from a credential vaulting perspective. So now let's look into the credential retrieval. So from the credential retriever, these are the few steps what user is going to perform. First, user is going to log in into the AWS console and he will be choosing the root user option. Then user will be choosing the username from the AWS root privilege account in, in CyberArk. Then user has to key in a captcha. As a next step, user will be grabbing the credential again from the AWS root privilege account in CyberArk. As a last step, so users simply have to click on a connect button. So that's how user will be getting a one-time password. And once user is able to get a one-time password, he just have to uh, copy and paste the password into the AWS console. That's how user will be able to log in into the AWS console. So uh, enough talking, let's have a uh, look at the step-by-step -step on how you can do the credential vaulting and how you can import all the plugins and how the credential retrieval process is gonna look like. So now let's jump on to the demonstration or how to set it up. So first what I'll do, I'll log in into my PVWA. So I'm logging, logging in as a vault administrator uh, called Mike. So I think by now, if I go to my uh, desktop, we will go to the AWS root account plugin. So I downloaded uh, these two packages from CyberArk. So this is what I have stated in my, in my presentation. So once you unzip this AWS root account with MFA package, so you are able to see there are two different platform, MFA device key and the AWS root account with MFA. So what we will do as a first step, so which I have already performed it, but just to share with you guys, you can go to the platform management and you can import the platform. So you can go to the AWS root account and you can try importing it, the platform. So in my case, I'm getting the error because this particular platform has already been imported. So, and then as a next step, so, you can try importing this MFA device key. Again, the similar step, what you have to perform. So once both of these platforms has been imported, so what's gonna happen, you will see under the website. Under the website, you are able to see AWS root account with MFA and MFA device key has been imported. So what we can do as a next step, we have to import the TOTP connection component. You can go to the manage PSM connector so in my case, I have already, uh, I have already, uh, I've already uh, imported this TOTP component, connection component. I'll go to the AWS root account and I will try to, okay, again, I'm getting a error message. Again, it's gonna be a similar kind of a process. So let me delete it. So I'll press cancel. So this is how it's gonna look like. In the TOT token, so one more thing what I did. So you have to go to the configuration options. Under the configuration option, go to the options and then go to the connection components. So once you go to the connection components, so you have to go to the PSM TOTP. In the PSM QOTP, you have to uh, make sure that your client dispatcher is sitting in this particular folder, okay? 
So this is one of the things you have to take a note. So this is a little bit about importing, importing the platforms and the connection component. So what we can do now, we can start creating two different accounts.